Welcome to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, your daily dose into the health and wellness world. Welcome back to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, where we dive into everything health, fitness, and nutrition related five days a week in five minutes or less. This podcast is brought to you by Umzu, and I'm your host, Tyler Woodward. Today, we're talking about what I'm calling the non-toxic new year. As you may or may not know, many of the products that we are ingesting or putting on our skin daily contain many toxins that are hindering our health, including things like parabens, phthalates, heavy metals, xenoestrogens, benzophenones, triclosins, alkylphenols, BPA, BPS, the list goes on. Going through your cosmetic cabinet can be a very daunting task for a few reasons. For one, half the toxins in the products you may not even be aware of and it can be very difficult to find toxin-free or minimally toxic products if you don't know what you're looking for. So this is going to be a mini-series so I can really do my due diligence on the subject and help you all get off on the right foot to start the new year. But without further ado, here's the non-toxic new year skincare edition. Number one, sunblock. First and foremost, the best sunblock is without a doubt a healthy tan. The act of tanning causes the synthesis of the protein melanin, which is literally nature's sunblock and is why those with darker skin tones get sunburnt much less easily and also possibly why they exhibit much lower rates of skin cancer. The key with tanning is to not get burned, which is easier said than done for those of us with a fair skin tone, which is where natural sunblocks come in. Coconut oil has been used as both a lotion and a sunblock for thousands of years and actually has an SPF of about 2. This is a great means of both hydrating your skin and protecting it without hindering vitamin D synthesis, which by the way, vitamin D may also play a photo protection role as in protecting you from the sun slash burning and the fact that most commercial sunblocks somewhat hinder vitamin D synthesis may even potentially cause you to burn more. Plus coconut oil is highly saturated, so it is likely to help to saturate your skin's fat stores, which also likely, likely plays a role in protecting you from the sun. Olive oil, albeit a bit more expensive, has also been used for thousands of years. Olive oil contains these extremely long chain fatty acids called polycosinols that seem to exert very protective effects by acting as a sort of antioxidant and seem to also help with sun protection. Olive oil has an SPF of about 6 and again can be used as a lotion to help hydrate your skin after the sun. If you need a heavier duty, or heavier duty sunblock, look for something that is made with zinc oxide as this will significantly block the sun's rays and is minimally toxic. Number two, lotion. If you suffer from dry skin or just want to keep your skin looking youthful for the long haul, make sure you're not putting crap onto it. What you want to look for in a good lotion is something that is derived from saturated or monounsaturated fats. The more saturated a fat is, the more stable it is, which is why you can leave coconut oil, which is almost all saturated fat, exposed to the elements for literally years and it won't go rancid, while vegetable oils, on the other hand, are mostly polyunsaturated and will go bad in a few days. The same applies to our skin, which is mostly fat, so we want it to be as saturated as possible. Another factor for a good lotion is going to be how comedogenic it is, which basically means how much it blocks your pores, which can cause acne if in excess, and also determines how well it rubs into your skin or absorbs. While I've never used it, tallow has a very similar fat composition to our skin and is absorbed very well, while being mostly saturated and containing a lot of the fat-soluble vitamins that will help promote skin health. But if you want a cheaper option, coconut oil is extremely cheap and highly saturated, but it's also void of any nutrients pretty much. Shea butter is another great option that is more popular and contains some vitamin E as well as carotenoids in addition to many of the beneficial fatty acids found in both olive oil and tallow. Cocoa butter is another great option if you don't want to use the others. Three, skincare. This one is for my ladies out there. I'm far from an expert on makeup or skincare, but my sister uses a brand called The Ordinary. I also know Cosmo Beauty, Fat Skin, and Saturay Official also make very good products. Again, what you're looking for is something with a base of saturated fat that is void of any additives, fillers, or toxins. Vitamin E, vitamin A, as retinol, or B3, all very beneficial ingredients that you can look for. But quite frankly, there's not a lot of non-toxic makeup brands that I'm aware of. A few recommendations for makeup brands that I've found are Beauty Counter, Well People, Lily Lolo, Natural Juice, and Alma Pure. But again, I have no experience with it, so take that with a grain of salt and make sure to do your own research. Next up, we've got deodorant. When referring to deodorants, we've got two categories, really. Antiperspirants and regular deodorants. Generally, I'm going to recommend avoiding antiperspirants, as many of them function by using aluminum in order to block or clog your pores from releasing sweat. If you are looking for an antiperspirant, I typically recommend one that is based on copper that uses, or 
natural ones that use natural antibacterials like oregano oil, coconut oil, vinegar, salt, etc. As far as normal deodorants, deodorants go, again, you're looking for something with highly saturated base like coconut oil, shea butter, or tallow, natural fragrances, and natural antibacterials. Minerals like baking soda or sodium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide are also commonly used to absorb perspiration and are great ingredients. Some of my favorite brands for natural deodorants are Native and Fatscan. And if you don't want to use these brands, just make sure that whatever brand you do use doesn't contain any of the toxic ingredients listed at the start of this episode. Last but not least, we've got cologne and perfume. Now, I don't have any specific recommendations for these again, but do some research and utilize these same principles. Find companies that use natural fragrances and intentionally do not include endocrine disrupting chemicals in their products. Moral of the story, keep the ingredient list short and simple. Well, that's it for this episode. So remember to swap out those toxic beauty products and make sure to tune in tomorrow for round two where we'll detox your bathroom. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button and to share with a friend. It really means a lot. And remember, these opinions are based on my own experiences and research and is not medical advice. So until next time, be good.